There was a recent article on the very popular health website, Eating Well, titled The 20 Best High Protein, Low Fat Foods Recommended by Dietitians. They said a lot of good things in the article, but also a lot of nonsense. So let's separate the science from the nonsense in this video. Here is the article itself. Now, by the way, this is nothing personal against the author. I don't know her personally. I'm pretty sure she doesn't know me. Uh, this is just an analysis of the content of the article, nothing personal against the author. Uh, so in more detail, here's what you, what you can expect to learn. First, I'll give you my comments on parts of the article, both the good as well as the, well, nonsense. Um, here are the foods that I agree with on their list that actually are high protein, low fat. Three, the nonsense. Um, which foods, uh, they, they make it look like they're high protein, low fat, but really aren't. Um, and then lastly, a little look at their um, little piece of propaganda. If there is so much deceitful information here, why does it say it is recommended by dietitians? I'll give you two reasons for that. Um, before we jump in, who am I? My name is Igor. I'm the author of 13 books on exercise and nutrition, including four Amazon bestsellers as well. I've been a personal trainer since 2006, and I've been training other personal trainers uh, in my methodology by speaking at some of the world's largest personal training conferences since 2013. As well, I've delivered over 400 wellness presentations to some of Canada's largest corporations, including IBM, Bosch, American Express, University of Toronto, Investors Group, and others. If you want to learn, when I publish more videos about myth busting, exercise, and nutrition, click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So let's jump in. Here is something that the author says. While not everything comes down to calories in and calories out when you're trying to lose weight, a calorie deficit is needed to achieve your goals. That is correct. There's no arguing with that. If the goal is fat loss, you have to consume fewer uh, consume fewer calories than you expend. It's very, very simple. Uh, not necessarily easy because this is a fluctuating and dynamic equation, but at the end of the day, that's that's what it looks like. She goes on to say, macronutrients don't exist in isolation, and most foods contain more than one. Many high-protein foods also contain fat and carbohydrates. This is absolutely correct. So if, if she says that, that most high-protein foods also contain fat and carbs, why is the article just about protein and fat? What happened to carbs? In the next few, uh, few sections, you'll see why she didn't include carbs in her, in her, in her article about a high-protein, low-fat. Um, she goes on to say, that said, there are four types of dietary fats, saturated, trans, monounsaturated, and polyunsaturated. Consuming the first two in excess may increase your risk of heart disease, while the latter two may help reduce it. The trans fat, I agree with. They do indeed raise the risk of heart disease. Saturated fats, however, don't raise the risk of heart disease, despite what we've been told for decades, and there's a lot of research backing this up. Here's one meta-analysis titled, Meta-analysis of Prospective Cohort Studies Evaluating the Association of Saturated Fat with Cardiovascular Disease. And I want to explain what a meta-analysis is. It's a study of many studies. Their conclusion from all this research is that there is no connection between saturated fats and heart disease. Here's another meta-analysis titled, Intake of Saturated and Trans-Unsaturated Fatty Acids and Risk of All-Cause Mortality, Cardiovascular Disease, and Type of Diabetes. Same thing. The conclusion is there is no connection between saturated fats and heart disease. And the reason that I like to use meta-analyses for these kinds of videos is so that I'm not accused of cherry-picking uh, evidence. When you have a pet theory, there may be a lot of research that disputes it and only one study that backs it up. And if you're cherry-picking, you're just going to show the one study that backs it up. I like to use something that looks at uh, the, full, the full gamut of the research. And so again, a lot of research shows no connection between saturated fats and heart disease, despite what we've been told for decades. Uh, and this is, but at this point, mainstream. If you want me to elaborate on this in a different video, just comment below and I'll shoot a video about this in the future. Now, if all fats and carbs raise the uh, all fats and carbs do raise the risk of heart disease if consumed in excess, so carbs and fats aren't the problem. Excess carbs and fats aren't the problem. Here is my theory: I think that total calories are king and play a much bigger role in the ratio of mono monounsaturated to polyunsaturated to saturated fats, or the ratio of carbs to fats. And there is a decent amount of evidence to back this up. Um, your, if you eat a highly processed food diet or not that processed, doesn't matter as much 
as total calories, which are king. And again, if you want me to elaborate th on this in a different video, just uh, comment in, uh, leave a, uh, let me know in the comment section below. Um, now they do talk about 20 high protein and low fat foods. So here are the foods that I actually agree with on their list. Low fat cottage cheese, shrimps, pork tenderloin, skinless, boneless chicken breast, white flaky fish, seitan, turkey breast, tuna, and non-fat Greek yogurt. These are all correct. They got those right. Well done. Here's the nonsense. <laughs> Let's start there. They say chickpeas are high protein, low fat. Well, to quantify what is high protein, it's always a compare to what. We can compare it to total requirements, or we can compare it to the well-established high protein kings, uh, basically meat, fish, and seafood. So first of all, chickpeas are not high in protein. Um, and again, to evaluate what's high protein, one way to do that is to figure out how does it compare to your daily requirements. So let's look at that. As an example, let's use a 170 pound person who is under 60 years old and is strength training. Somebody like that needs 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram per day. So a 170, uh, 170 pound person is 77 kilograms times 1.6 grams equals 123 grams of protein per day is what this person requires. How much do chickpeas contain? Only 11 grams per, per cup, according to the nutrition database of Health Canada. So you would need 11 cups of chickpeas to get your protein requirements. Um, now, again, this is a high protein, low fat article. What happened to carbs? So if you look at it as just protein and fat, it looks, yes, in, in favor of protein. Um, so there are six grams of fats and 21 grams of protein. But again, what happened to carbs? If we add in carbs, they actually contain 63 grams of carbs. So let me ask you, are chickpeas a low fat, high protein food, or are they low fat, moderate protein, high carb food? Well, it's probably the latter. Uh, now, not, that's not to say that chickpeas are bad for you. They're not. They're actually an, an excellent food, very healthy. I frequently recommend them for many different reasons, for weight loss, for diabetics, etc but not because of their protein content. That's just not correct. Um, next, the author goes on to say that peas are a high protein, low fat food. Let's look at that. So the protein content of peas is only seven grams compared to the best, the, the gold standard, let's call it turkey breast, which is 45 grams per six ounce breast. And the total needed for this uh, 170 pound person is 123 grams per day. You would need a lot of cups of peas in order to get your daily protein requirements. So A, it's not high protein. It's actually low protein and even lower fat. And B, it's actually pretty high carb. Uh, so again, if you just look at protein and fat, you're going to see that it's got a lot more protein than fat. But when you plug carbs into the equation, peas are a high carb food. That's not a bad thing. They're 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 very healthy for you. They taste good, in my opinion. Um, they're very high in fiber, so I frequently recommend them. But again, not because of their protein content, which is negligible. Black beans, the author says, are high in protein. Well, let's see. Are they really high in protein? So black beans contain 15 grams of protein per cup compared to turkey breast, which is 45, and compared to the daily requirements for a 170 pound pound person, 123. So are they a good source of protein? They're decent. Are they the best? No, they're not. There's way better things you could be eating for protein content. Now, should you eat them anyway? Sure, I frequently recommend them for their fiber content. They're probably the king of fiber. Um, and personally, I like them, they, they taste good. Um, but here's what they look like without uh, without carbs. Uh, it does look like it's low, uh, low fat, high protein. But when you plug carbs into the equation, they also contain 41 grams of carbs. So they're not really a protein or a fat, they are a carb, which again, is not a good thing or a bad thing. Just don't call them high protein when they're not. Um, the author makes the claim that edamame is rich in uh, protein and low in fat. Now this is outright misinformation. If you look at it purely based on weight, it does look like it's higher in protein than it is in fat, 11 grams of fat to 21 grams of protein. And when you add in carbs, it's 18 grams. However, that is by weight. Weight doesn't matter, calories matter. Um, and so both protein and carbs contain four calories per gram, but fats contain nine calories per gram. So when you look at it on a per gram basis, yes, it looks like it's low fat, high protein. But when you look at it by calories, which is what really matters, that's no longer the case. 
is actually 99 calories of fat and 84 grams of protein. So this would actually be called moderate fat, moderate protein. When you plug in carbs, it's actually moderate everything, moderate fat, moderate protein, moderate carbs. Um, so that's, that's the real truth about edamame. Next, she goes on to say soy milk is high protein, low fat. Well, let's look at that. Soy milk, one cup contains seven grams of protein, turkey breast, 45 grams. And what a 170 pound person needs is 123 grams. So no, no, soy milk is not high fat, uh, high protein, low fat. Soy, <laughs> soy milk is low protein, even lower fat and high carb. Um, next, when we plug in carbs, here's what happens eight grams of carbs, okay? So it's actually not, this is actually a complete misnomer that it's high protein, low fat, it's not. Um, she goes on to say black eyed peas are high protein, low fat. Let's look at that. The fat content in black eyed peas is three grams. The protein content is 40 grams. But then what happens when you plug in the carbs? Actually 99 grams. So it contains about a quarter, maybe slightly more of protein, but the remainder is almost ex exclusively carbs, uh, which again, is not a bad thing. Um, it, it's black eyed peas are very, very high in fiber. So I frequently recommend them for many different reasons, but not because of their protein content. Moving on, skim milk. The protein content in skim milk is nine grams in turkey breast, 45 grams, and the other requirements are 123 grams. How many cups of skim milk would you need to get your requirements? Something like 13 or so. Uh, that's a lot. Now, again, when we plug, when we just look at protein and fat, it looks like it's heavily in favor of protein. So you can legitimately call it um, low fat, but you can't legitimately call it high protein because it's not. It's got more carbs than protein. Nine grams of protein to 12 grams of carbs. Moving on, eggs, she says, are um, low fat, high protein, um, kind of. So they're actually moderate in both. The protein content is six, the fat content is five by weight. But we know, you're now a savvy, savvy viewer, you know that grams are not what counts. Calories are what counts. And so when you look at it by calories, it's actually different. It's got 24 calories of protein, 45 grams of fat. So this is outright misinformation. Now, we go on to tofu. Tofu um, has 7 grams of fat and 12 grams of protein. Again, grams are not what matters calories are what matters and fat contains nine grams a uh, nine calories per gram protein contains four calories per gram so when you look at it by calories here's what it looks like it's actually the opposite it's not high protein low fat it's in fact moderate both um she says peanut butter powder is high protein low fat let's look at is it indeed first high protein and if so how high well peanut butter uh, powder contains five grams five measly grams of protein, turkey breast contains 45 grams, and um, the requirements of a 170 pound, pound person are 123 grams. You would need a lot of peanut butter powder to get your daily protein requirements. So I wouldn't count it towards it. Um, now, is it indeed high protein, low fat? Not really. It's low protein, low fat, and high carb. Okay. Um, quinoa. Quinoa, she says, is high protein, low fat. Is it really? Well, it's got four grams four measly grams of protein. Turkey breast contains 45 grams and the total needed is 123 grams. It's not a high protein source. It's low protein, low fat. Um, and so uh, what happens when you plug the carbs into it? This is what it actually looks like. Again, low protein, low fat, high carb. That doesn't make quinoa bad for you. I frequently recommend it for many different reasons, but not because of its protein content. So if there is so much deceitful information here in this article, why does it say recommended by dietitians? There's two major reasons. One, authority. She says it's recommended by dietitians in hopes that the reader doesn't go and look this up in nutrition databases. Well, I did do that and it looks like it's, it's either part truths or outright lies. The other thing is she doesn't state her methodology. Maybe there were two dietitians that said, yes, I agree with what you said, and 48 dietitians who said, this is complete nonsense. And she included by dietitians, but she didn't state her methodology. Um, and so if you want to dive deeper into science or nonsense, if you want to watch my other science or nonsense videos, there was another article written in another very popular um, health website about 25 high protein snacks. If you want to check out that uh, video dispelling those myths, click on the link on your screen right now or in the description below.